This meeting is Hello, being everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Faye, and this is our session of Careers in Medicare Sales. With me today are my friends and my business partners at Insurance Plan Advisors. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. How are you, Faye? Hi, Faye. You, you two look well. like twins. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> You've been together so long, you look like twins. <laughs> He's rubbing I think off it's on just me. Cause, just because we're wearing the same shirt, probably. <laughs> so Anthony and Sultan are both with me today. And what we are here to do is to talk to you about careers in Medicare sales. What we'd like to share with you are um, our journeys, in Medicare sales, each of us, believe it or not, we all three of us, every one of us started at the same point. Right, guys? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. We all started at the same point, and that was as a captive agent, a sales representative for one of the three largest health insurers in the country. And look where you guys are now. Look at where you are. I'm going to start probably by just asking you if you had it to do all over again, either one of you, would you go the same path? Would you use a career path, a captive path, and then change? I mean, honestly, that's a great question. And I ask myself that every day. And you know, truly, um, being a career agent was great, but I do feel like I did waste some of my time because, you know, when you become a career and then you go to becoming independent, you have to re um, regrain all your members. And being a broker, what I realized is as a broker, you're not just stuck with one plan. You're representing all the plans and you're doing it based on the needs of the individual based on what doctors they have, what providers. And I feel like when I was a career, I was losing members every other month. As a broker, you hold on to your members. I have clients that have been with me since day one and haven't switched and barely losing clients as I did when I was a career. So I'm very happy with that to say. Okay. And then would you start over as a career captive or if you had, if you were just getting licensed, you just finished taking the exam, you, you know, just came home and told your wife, I passed, what, what would you, what direction would you take? You know, there was a time where the career was beneficial. Uh, that time is no more. So right now, if you're getting into doing this, you're getting your insurance license right now, the broker channel is where it's at. Mm -hmm. It's where it's happening. It's where a lot of the providers, the insurance companies are really reaching out to the brokers. Um, there's a lot of resources out there um, that we work with companies for, for brokers starting out. And so right now, the broker channel is where it's at, not careers anymore. Well, I can tell you uh, when I started at that same company where we all started and then I was promoted to a sales manager, but the market that I went to actually was ahead of its time because in that market, that market had been one of the top markets in the company throughout the country every year, year after year after year. And why was that? It was because that market did not depend solely on captive agents to bring in the business. Yes, the dollars right. for advertising that the carrier uses and all of that. But when I went to that market, it was a little different than what we were doing in the market where we were. And it was because the bulk of the sales came from independent agents that director exactly. recognized that that was a way 
to get more sales in for the company. And also appreciated the fact that there could be a cooperation with independent agents while you still have captive agents. Mm -hmm. Now what's happening exactly. with all of the carriers, and you guys can attest to this, I'm sure, they're they're slimming down they're narrowing the captive force i mean companies are not carrying yep. that big overhead of payroll anymore that big that big overhead of uh, benefits instead yeah. they're looking to independent agents to actually bring in the business so i think if i ask myself that same question if i were to start today um I probably would look at the independent model also because I have an entrepreneurial spirit. I've always been, my husband's always been in business for himself. So being an independent agent, you have to understand business. You have to understand how to run a business. Absolutely. Nobody tells you, you have to be here at nine o'clock in the morning and you can leave for lunch at 12 and you can go home at five. You have to work when you have to work. So how does it feel for exactly. you guys being your own boss? It's it's amazing. I mean, being your own boss to me, I mean, you, you, it's amazing, but you also need discipline, right? You need to make sure you discipline yourself, uh, do, following up with your clientele, you know, running your appointments, and then whatever, you know, if you're doing marketing, if you're doing leads, if you're uh, working doctor's offices, you have to be disciplined in making sure that you're doing those things on a regular basis. But it's a rewarding thing being your own boss because you could set your own time. You know, you could you could you could take a month off in June or July, you know, and, and you know, there's no uh, well, there's no boss over you telling you, hey, uh, you know, you didn't meet your goals. So to me, that's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. And to piggyback off of what Anthony said, from my experience, this is having your own business. You know, like you said, Faye, your husband has a business. I mean, I come from a background of families that have businesses and I know it costs hundreds of thousands, 50,000, you know, mm -hmm. just to open a business. And in this Medicare Advantage business, your investment is very low, very but low. your return is high. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that I can take away from what we're doing we own the business. You know, earlier you asked about a career. Well, when you're a career, you don't own that business. The insurance company that you work for owns that business. As a career man, as an independent, I own this business. So if one day I want to pass this business down to my kids, or I want to sell my business, I can do that down the road because I own it. And that's to me is the biggest and most rewarding thing. And to be able to open this business with a minimal investment, but for your return, and I've had cell phone stores that I've owned, family members that have hotels, gas stations, and honestly, it takes a lot of their time. They work six hours a week, and they they're stuck. We are we can go out meet people, community. I can say I want to too. I I don't know if it's me or if it's your connection, but you were kind of going a little bit in and out, Sultan. Uh, I think you were talking about your family businesses and how much it how much capital it took to start those businesses. Do you hear us? Let me show you. I can see Anthony very clearly, but I can't see Sultan and I can't hear him. Um, for everyone who's watching, we're talking about careers in Medicare sales. Um, and I want you to know that Bring up this, there is an opportunity for, um, there is an opportunity for everyone who wants to own their own business, who actually wants to prepare themselves to leave a legacy 
Um, I know these guys have not talked about their families and they're having some technical difficulties. So I'll let you know. I mean, I know that it's important to Sultan to have that family time. But I can remember when we were captive agents, there would be no way he could just go home and take his daughter to a, a play day or take his daughter to the beach. That's not something you can do when you're working for someone else. And at some point, you want to find the kind of career that is going to catapult you into uh, having the resources that you need, having the time with your family that you need, being able to just uh, be available to family. This is such a time when you know, family is so important. They're always important. But with things that happen with us, with illnesses and deaths and family and friends, and uh, we just need to have that closeness in family and that time to be with family. So to do that, one of the ways to do that, of course, with is having a career in Medicare sales. And what we're talking about is how you might be able to build that kind of career as an independent agent. So it looks like you guys are, you have a better picture, Sultan, but you're on mute. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you another question if you can unmute yourself. Uh, before you do that, uh, Sultan, let me, let me just answer. Uh, one of our attendees has asked that I call when we're off the call, and I certainly will. Uh, I'm gonna share my number, but I will certainly make any calls or any requests for more information that anyone needs. My number is 407-340-6282. And I'll be happy to reach out and make calls 407-340-6282. Two, eight, two. Now, let me tell you, I have the same technical problems here at my home with my cell phone. It goes in and out. So I am, I am very sympathetic. I'm feeling you guys, Anthony and Sultan, with that cell phone. I have that same problem. So uh, if you have a problem and you reach me, we can definitely do a landline call or we can do uh, a messenger call. So no problems. So Anthony, are you back with me? Sultan, are you here? I see your picture and you're not muted. Can you hear me? I'm back. Okay, great, great. So uh, Sultan brought up so many points. Um, I don't know. I don't know which one to, to start with now. But Sultan, while you were. Me? While you were temporarily disabled, I let everybody, I share with everybody that you have young children. So I know that it's important to you to have your own business because you can spend time with them. Uh, Anthony, I'm not sure. I know you have children as well, uh, but I'm not sure, you know, the ages. But family time is important, isn't it, guys? I thought you said you were here. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Um, there is one part in this whole conversation that I wanted Anthony and or Sultan to address because they can address it better than I can. I want you to know that I'm writing a new book and it'll be out soon and it's called How to Start in Medicare Sales. Well, there's a big, big portion of that book that's about how to choose a business partner or choosing the right business partner. Choosing a business partner in this business is so, so important in how your business is going to run. Uh, Sultan and Anthony, insurance plan advisors, are my business partners. We partner together. I partner with them, they partner with me. They help me, I know what I'm supposed to do. I don't need the training, the day-to-day -day stuff, what you need to do, but I do need to know where to go when there are opportunities that are presented to them 
uh, as general agents or FMOs. So that's how they partner with me. So you need partners who are going to be able to be intercessors between you and the carrier. These are the people who will have resources. These are the people who will be there to find the opportunities that you need to run your business the way you want to run your business. Now, because I've been doing this for a long time too, I'm not a big field person. Most of my sales are done through seminars and educational one-on-one -on -one meetings. I prefer to do business that way. I mean, after doing it for so long, you know that everything is the law of numbers. So my thing is, if I can get more people in the room at one time, I have a better opportunity to present what I have for them, give them what they need, and have more time instead of going appointment and doing it one by one. Now, as you're starting out, you may need to do one by one. You got to do the onesies at some point. But eventually, you're going to get to that point where you may want to change your focus. You may want to operate your business. And you may be in an area where there is a better opportunity to do group meetings instead of one-on-ones. It entirely depends on a lot of different things. The, the whole point is, if you have someone like myself, Anthony, or Sultan, and I think if you add our years of experience together, uh, you're going to come up with close to, close to 100 years of experience in Medicare sales. That's what you need is someone who you can work with, who can guide you to actually have the business that you want to have and have it run the way you want to run it. So our whole thing today yeah. in careers in Medicare sales is an opportunity to introduce ourselves, tell you who we are, tell you where we came from. We all came from captive. We all came from the same uh, top Medicare insurer, but we're still doing Medicare business where we're doing it differently. We are the wheels on the ground for that carrier and we're the wheels on the ground for many, many other carriers. So as Sultan said in a broker position, you get to offer more than one product so that you can actually meet the customer's needs. That's important if you're gonna run your business. When you go into a Publix or a grocer, they don't sell just one kind of soda. They got the Pepsis, they got the, uh, the Coca-Cola, the Sprites, and then they got the Fantas and the no names as well. So you have to be able to have a variety of products and know how to position them and know how to reach the audience that you need to reach. And that's where we come in. Uh, if, e if either one of you, even uh, Sultan, if you want to call me back on the phone, I'll try to put you on speaker and um, have you answer this question because I think you guys can answer it better. And that is, what would you say is the strength and reliability of insurance plan advisors? That's something that you guys can answer. Do you want to just call me? I noticed that you were calling. Uh, call me direct on my cell phone and I'll put you on speaker and maybe you can answer it that way. You're gonna try? The, the question is, what is the strength? What's the strength and reliability of insurance plan advisors? I, you're in and out and very, very foggy. What, but we need to know what sets you Insurance plan advises apart.
I mean, I think that thing on the point is over a hundred years of their experience. Um, we consider ourselves a family. We don't look at you just as a number. We look at I don't think that that's going to be family. We try uh, to Sultan, you're no, you it's not coming through well enough for me to understand what you're saying. Uh, but I think that you were starting to talk about. You were talking about dollars. Um, I can address dollars. Uh, for those of you who are watching and those of you who are listening, Medicare Advantage sales year by year have been increasing in the amount that's paid as for new Medicare sales and for renewal sales. Uh, when I first went independent, I think that number was like $17 a month per person for renewals. And now it's up to like 20, 26, somewhere around there. So there are more and more people who are actually doing Medicare sales for the reason that when we talk about building a legacy, you're building hey, residual hey, you income. I can hear you. Yes. Go ahead, ask your question, Faye. What was the question you asked us? We couldn't hear you because it was all getting all garbly. Oh, okay. I'm glad now we got a better connection. The question Much I better. asked that you guys can answer better than I can is what is the strength and reliability of insurance plan advisors? What sets your agency apart from other agency? And it's, I know what it is, but I need for you to be able to tell our audience why should people want to work with us? Great. Great question, Faye. Um, I believe with insurance plan advisors, why we set ourselves apart from all the other agencies, FMOs out there, is we consider ourselves a family. You know, every and each person that we meet and joins us with us, um, and we help folks, like we don't put people as a number. We know each and individual person. You know, we try to help everybody that joins our company. Um, we have been through what everybody is trying to do, and that's to build their business. Um, you know, we started from scratch. I mean, you know, we have, you know, over 10,000 Medicare lives as an agency. Um, you know, we do the grassroots marketing. We do the, you know, telephone lead system. So we have tried everything out there. And, you know, what's been very successful is what Anthony said earlier. You are an independent agent. As long as you are motivated to go out every single day and, you know, put in the work, we will be motivated to help and support you as much and possible as we can. So I think what separates us from everybody else is our dedication to actually be there for you, listen to you help you and you know we've been in those shoes so we understand how hard it is to grow a book and you know we're going to try to help you find every avenue to help you succeed at doing this and i think that's our biggest strength it is that is definitely and i can attest to that um when i um came back to meet up with with plan advisors you guys where like you open arms and like, you know, hey cousin, where have you been? So it was really, really like a family reunion for me. And anytime I've asked for something for me or my team members, you found a way to get it done for me. And that's important. So for those of you who are listening, know that my experience in Medicare sales put me puts me in a position to listen to you as a business person 
find out where you want to go with your business and work with you individually. I enjoy working with the team. I enjoy telling the team, these are the things that we need to do. But what really makes me feel that I've done something is when an individual agent says to me, well, I need to, I need to actually have enough money to send my child to college, to school next year. Okay, how much is that? Let's figure out how much that is. And I could tell you enrollment and period by enrollment period, how many sales you need to do and where you need to go in your area to find those sales. That's yeah. what we do differently from other agencies. We're just that hands-on and that right down with everybody that we're working with, we're in the trenches with you. So yeah, I don't know if there are any questions from our audience. Uh, do we have any questions from our audience at all? You can unmute yourself and, and ask your questions if you'd like to. I have a question. Yes. Hi, my name is Carol Jamison. Hi, Carol. How are you? Hi, Carol. How are you? I am, I'm an um, agent. I'm in Columbus, Mississippi. And so this coming up AEP will be my second year. Um, so how do you, and I work part-time, I'm at work. That's why you see my camera going on and off because I'm, I'm at work. And my job is pretty flexible. So what would you recommend for someone who works part-time who's not able to get in the field every day? Um, I, I, I have a gold in mind for this AEP. Um, one thing that's working in our favor in, this, in the county I'm in, Aetna has like the better plans over the other carriers. And so what do you recommend um, for me to do in order to uh, you know, grow my business this upcoming AEP? Well, there's several things that you can do knowing that you have a new offering or uh, new, something new is coming from one of your carriers. That's where I would start. Start with the carrier field manager, see what activities you can set up Plan your calendar out though, before you even approach the, the field sales manager. Know what days and what hours you are going to commit to working. If you are working full-time and you can only work in the evenings and weekends, then that's the time you need to have blocked out in your calendar and know these are the times I have available because that sales manager may have an activity on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, you can't attend it. So know what you can do before you reach out and then find as many activities to fill that time slot, those time slots that you have blocked out and you can start to fill them now. You know that AEP starts October 15th and you can start talking about benefits October 1st. You can start to do things now that can get those hours that you have set aside booked up for appointments for yourself and then I and then you know later on i mean we can get set, set up something specifically you know for your market you know like we can probably look into say like the cvs is there or whatnot where maybe we can get you know get you a tabletop um so just for your specific area we, we need to um, pinpoint that for your area and Carol, just to piggyback off on both what Faye and Anthony just mentioned, I loved when you said that, you know, what hours can I work? This is your business. You're going to be the one to set your hours. If you want to, you know, if you're off Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, then you can work, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday for all your clients. Set your appointments around your time. I have clients, I call them and I tell them, I'm going to see you at 10 o'clock. Okay, if 10 doesn't work, let's do 11 so, you know, as a part-time, you have the control for the hours because it's your business. And then, um, and you know, with this industry, what I've found is the biggest and easiest way to get things going is by letting people know, your friends, your family, you know, neighbors, your local, like, dry cleaning business, whatever you have around you, 
put any stack cards that you have, which we can send you examples. I'm sure Faye can put some stack cards up. People will call you. And, you know, once you reach a couple folks, they'll start telling their friends, their neighbors about you, and you'll be able to grow that way and, you know, see how quickly your business will go. And hopefully this will become from part-time to full-time for you soon. Right. That might be your ultimate goal, right, Carol? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you with Plan Advisors now? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I actually okay. have a upline. Um, I'm in between uplines. The upline, my current upline, I'm not happy with, to be honest with you. Um, and I found one that's kind of local by the hour away. I was on Facebook and I, I don't, I forgot how I found about, learned about this um, um, event that you were hosting and I wanted to be a part of it. I've been kind of doing a lot of groups on Facebook and just kind of start networking with other people. Um, mm -hmm. I really feel like my upline failed me last year and did not train me properly. And so the person I want to join, I can't because I'm in, in between my upline and he won't release me to after AEP. And so I'm kind of just stuck. Hey, it's still your business. Work it, it as best you can. If you get a concrete plan and it works, you know, then that's okay. You still yes. going to get paid. Yes. Um, what I would suggest is uh, get your, make sure you have your calendar set up so you know, you know, what you can commit. And then once you have those hours and days down, fill them, fill them okay. with activities and you can't go wrong with that. Okay. Uh, anybody have any other questions? Anthony or Sultan, do you have anything else you want to add? I mean, and Carol, that's one thing you mentioned. And while Faye is here, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, one thing you mentioned, Carol, and that's one thing we don't do um, as plan advisors and Faye as well will tell you. When we have an agent, which doesn't happen often, that wants to leave, we will give you an automatic release just because we don't want to ever hold anybody into making them wait through the whole EP to be released. So when you're considering your new upline, I mean, if you haven't went with anybody and obviously you want to let Faye have a chance, um, that's one thing that we don't do. We don't believe in that. As we said, we're family. We would never want to hold anybody back if they're not happy. So that's something you may want to consider in the future that who you're getting in business with. And Faye will tell you um, with all of our experiences over a hundred years, I mean, nobody has bad mouthed us out there. Thank God. And, you know, we continue, we are you, we're in your shoes. It's just, you know, we have a lot more of experience that we can pass along to you and help you make this as an easy business that you're going to be able to do full time one day. Yes, Carol Sultan is absolutely correct. We're not here to hold anybody back. Uh, when we tell you we want to help you grow your business, that's what we mean. And if you find you could grow it better someplace else, then we're going to wish you well. Um, uh, one thing I might mention to you, I don't know, Carol, if it, if it will help you at all, but I do have a four-week accelerator uh coaching program that starts on Monday, August 29th. Okay. And that is, it starts at 7 p.m. It's four, four Mondays at 7 p.m. in a group setting. And then for each of those weeks, each participant has a half hour uh, during the week that is your half hour to talk about just your business. Okay. So you're learning all the general things that you can do in the group on Monday night. But then during the week, you have a half hour. It's your time that is just for you. And we talk specifically about your business, the demographics in your area, what's available in your area, how many senior centers are there, how many CVSs, what can you do? So uh, how to actually work your business is your one-on-one. -on -one, so that's included. Uh, if you want, I will share the link with you. Um, it starts on the 29th or the 22nd? 29th. Okay. And that's what actually a great thing to do, Carol, because honestly, in our industry, the more you learn, the better you're going to become. 
Um, and Faye has the most experience. I've learned a lot from her myself. So she's putting together something that, you know, I wish I had it when I first started out because it would have definitely helped save me some time. And definitely, you know, you want to listen to what she has to say, Faye, and she's amazing. Okay. Well, thank you. But um, the, the course, I put the, um, the link in the chat so you can check it out. But if you have a problem, you have my number now and I will call you later too. You know, there are other, uh, there are other learning opportunities that are available on my website too. So we can talk about it if you like, okay? Um, I'm so sorry that I don't, I guess you're not on my email list. If you haven't seen this before, are you in my Facebook group? I sell Medicare plans. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I well, so. I, I posted all the, all the, the marketing for this course in, in that group. So you can catch it there too. So that way you'll learn more about what the course is about. Okay. I'm learning. Go ahead, I'm sorry. All right, I, I think I learned about this event um, in the um, Medicare bill. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I only posted once about the four week course in Medicare bill. Okay. Cause I, I'm respectful of other people's groups. Although Rebecca is my dearest friend, I'm respectful uh, yes, of other people's groups, you know? Yeah. And yours is called I Sell Medicare? I Sell Medicare Plans, yes. Yes, ma'am. I'm a part of it. Okay. 